Hello, my beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is Old. Today, we are learning from the pro Kabachi himself uh, at Amazing Trace. We're gonna actually have a very interesting game because this is uh, Ryan Saria with Sombra, you know, Sinyata, Ana, and Kabachi on Tracer. It's gonna be a Tracer here versus what is gonna be a full GOATS comp, which means that Kabachi's team is heavily out on main group wise and in general team composition wise. And we're gonna see how he still manages to play really well on Tracer, focusing on stuff like his resource management, his, of course, his pathing position the way he plays super, super aggressively without feeding too much, um, how he plays around his team and how, of course, he's a mechanical god and so on, but also how he's just can, how he can play very effectively under pressure. One of the big problems for Tracer players when they have a weak main group is that since it, it requires less resources from the enemy team to stop the advance of the main group of the enemy team, they can put more pressure onto the Tracer or onto the flankers to try to deal with their backline, which is makes it way more difficult to play. So that's what we're going to talk about today here in Hollywood. Now, um, of course, Kabachi stuff will be linked down in the description, his Twitter and his Twitch, but that he is legitimately not like a Overwatch League player or anything like that, but he's still an amazing player. He streams for Philadelphia Fusion, which uh, was one hell of a pickup, if you ask me. Um, he has that actually so competitive experience. He's played in the World Cup for Austria. I know he's not from Denmark, even though everybody thinks that he sounds like the friend. Um, so he's not Danish, he's from Austria. He played for the uh, uh, Team Austria in the World Cup of 2017. And and this is the only thing I knew because I, I found him on Liquipedia. He played for a team called 99% in the ABS Cup. And he got second place in that in that tournament, that in like a minor tournament, where he won, and I know this is a whopping $71. So he has some competitive, he actually has a prize pool. Um, <laughs> just a fun fact, but... Let's talk about him. Now, before we start, um, very sorry that there haven't been any real videos. I, I've been ill with my illness. Well, sick with my illness, I suppose. Also got hit by, for some reason, fever and all kinds of stuff. That's why there haven't been any uploads. Um, but since it's the sun break, I'm feeling much better now. If you're interested in hiring a private coach, it's 50 years for a two-hour session. doesn't matter if you're bronze top 100. So hit me up on a Discord server, which will be, be linked down in the description with my Twitch and Twitter. But, of course, always check out Kabachia, his YouTube, his Twitch, and so on and so on. But, yeah, with no further ado, let's really um, begin. How does he play on this map? We're gonna... Actually, I think that it's important that we just start with the breakdown. So, what we want to look at today is his resource management, how he gets value out of his resource, like, really just squeezes out values, you know, not just spamming blinks on, um, how he plays very aggressively without feeding, right? There's difference between being aggressive and being arrogant, um... How he plays, you know, he plays very up close and personal without, you know, pathing out of his team very good at like giving himself the opportunity to play both actively in his team while pressuring the enemy backline. So he's constantly active, but he's also playing very well around his team composition. That is a, 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 a when the enemy team has a superior team composition, you could say. Um, mechanical goss, as always, and, um, well, really, really active under pressure. Um, you can see him that how the way that he will be flanking on the very first swing he will be doing while his team pushes through main he will be flanking like this he will go here for screens which is very common and flank around here he has of course two options he can either go here or he can go here he will choose and this is where a lot of tracers do it wrong a lot of tracer players if your team pushes through main right a lot of tracers players will do this very 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 long expensive rotations and some tracers of course like to take the high ground rotation up here uh, both of these really good they have their, their differences the problem is that if your team pushes through main and you do one of these it's a very very long and expensive rotation it gives you access to this part of the back line but that's also the only thing that really gives you access to of course you can path you know uh, a dumpster to crates and for crates you can get access to cafe um, however, by going through screens, which he will be doing, and then walking through uh, back alley here, you go through here, through here, you one have access to his position that he will be using, which is over here, where he can deny this corner and help himself fight on the point, while also still getting access to cafe, and of course from cafe he can either take high ground and work on the objective, or path out here, or path out here, all of these gives him options, the way that he plays allows him options, and when that fight is lost, and his team push for main, he will of course push, no, push through screen, or fight through screen, he will be pushing for main, playing around his team. I think that the best way to show how Kabachi plays is really um, just to put, just to press start here. So let's really just start the bot and get it rolling. Uh, but notice how he always fight. He gets really, really, really good options. Um, okay, he's running pushes here, right? So he's going to go through screen, saves up blinks, right? Blink around. 
and now he has the option to actually flank. He's not going to flank with a weaker team composition. The enemy team will be sitting up here with their goats. He kind of scouts ahead. Okay, great. They are here. He will be taking... As there's less pressure on the point, he'll be hugging up here close, immediately kind of trying to pressuring out the Reinhardt, forcing both bubbles, really shitty bubble from their side of the team, uh, as the Rhine was disengaging, fighting here, and the entire bunker kind of swarms their Rhine. He has to give a little bit of space here, and continues to try to fight, doing another rotation. Notice how he has been actually pressuring the point now. First, playing here, when there wasn't really anyone in the main group, it was easy to kind of try to claim some space with his team, Right, denying this part of the map. Then, as soon as the bunker comes out and starts like kind of rolling out, which will do that this entire area here will be heavily pressured. He immediately blinks around and rotates over to crates. This, of course, gives him loud to access the backline of the enemy team if. They will be pushing up with their goats pressuring main. The backline will be exposed. Or he will be dragging resources back towards him to peel the backline so he can't get any kills, which will loosen the pressure on the front line. It also allows him a little bit more options as he won't be trapped in here and he will still be active. Right? He could, of course, blink back here and then go through cafe, but I would take him out of the combat. Instead, he blinks, burns a couple of his resources, blink past here. He's safe behind crates. He has his pathing routes out so he can get out. He can fight further back here and has still had access to cafe and objective. So he has his options here in the way that he positions. Right, so he's going to go through here a little bit, pressure the Moira a tiny bit. His Ryan, of course, dies. And now you can kind of see how his team is struggling to push forward with a, a lesser strong team composition but he is still managed to blink around notice that he always keeps and does his best at keeping his blink blink management everybody which we talked a lot about on the channel right he has one blink here he gets two shoot a little bit he gets three right blinks a little bit back there to not get stunned right he has three burns both now he still has one blink left so no matter what happens he can always escape he doesn't get caught out because he always has one blink, he always saved up and managed to build, right, he had two, took a little bit of damage, blink ground cover to avoid as much damage as he will get very little healing, right, goes behind, has still has one blink, has two, blinks to avoid damage, still has one, right, continuously doing this, here the brink comes and tries to stun him, and that's why he has this emergency blink, right, builds as many blinks, tanks some damage, goes out, Almost does actually manage to kill the Ryan, but almost, only almost, and then he dies, right? His team died, there wasn't much he could do, but he built 93 on Pulse Point, he kept a lot of pressure, and his team did not push him. That is, sometimes you just can't win the fight, but he built a lot of ult chat and did really good. You could see how he ran around, outplayed the enemy team, drew, drew a lot of resources backward on the Moira, the Lucio, and the Brake kind of running after him, chasing him. His team will be playing out from screen now, and here you will see again, because there's a lot of pressure. Again, notice how this looks from his perspective. Okay, so main tank is here, meaning his backline somewhere here, somewhere here. Meaning, okay, so Ryan, there's a Saria, there's probably a break somewhere here. Okay, meaning that the main is far more open, and meaning I can maybe access here, I can punish whoever is fighting against my team while they're fighting. So there's a weakness here, and there's a weakness here to the backline, and then to punish the front line. So he passes through main, again, to give him... The option to be emergence. His Ryan just died again. Right, a second time as they play playing at a much, you know, a very weak team composition. Just this, I just want to slow down because it's actually beautiful. Uh, I think one of the reasons that people watch Kabachi is just from these pulls. From this is absolutely just a beautiful off play. Bam bam pokes around. The break is like I'm gonna fucking counter this bitch. Goes for it. Wait for it. It's just so. It's just such a beautiful stick. It's actually like. Just gorgeous. Absolutely love it. Tries to punish uh, this area here to give it a little bit of chat. Ryan overextends. Kavachi does whatever he can to try to get a kill, right? And this is where, where, where it's become very difficult for someone that if you don't have a strong main group. He gets nanoed, immediately puts pressure on the, the Moira, the Moira burns fade, immediately puts pressure. Also remembering, as he goes here, he's not only pressuring and managed to maybe get a kill, he's forcing a shit ton of resources out of them, and peel, matrix zone, and dragging three four players back so the front line has an opening to actually be able to push in as the Ryan has now returned so he's not only trying to get a kill he's also forcing a lot of resources away splitting the team up right two kills easily with that EMP he gets healed he helps kind of burn down the the break here and now it's really just clean up time right he gets a Lucio here bam bam the diva's high ground right and he absolutely plays this just amazing right of course, really good mechanics gets you a long way, but the game sense here is, is the important part. The way that he drags and just disperses the resources of the enemy team really, really fast is really good. And that's an odd stake, that's an odd stagger. Now he's pushing the spawns, and you actually notice that you, they won't be capping because there's no one on the objective. But he's doing a good job what he should be doing as a DPS, pushing the spawns. He got another kill, he's helping them to stagger. 
right? And he's consistently trying to punish them here, even though they're not capping. He would, they would, of course, have full caps ages ago, but it's a really, really good um, stagger, and it's perfectly played for his side. It's just that his team didn't cap completely, right? Now he's doing the same thing. He plays high, logically, why? One, because, well, he didn't want to run through the rooms, and also because if by playing high, of course, you do gain access um, so that when they try to run in, you can deny them in the choke here so they can't get through easily without getting punished and you can fight them as well as to try to get onto the fight so it's easy it's a kind of win-win position um for him as a tracer bam shooting right the break comes in here right in general drawing a shit ton of resources get there right force actually got out the grab so to a certain extent you could oh you could almost say that it was actually worth not capping even though the staggers would most likely be more but it's fine right fucking destroying the Saria, easy pc just just you know a regular day in kabachi the bomb and there we go now he's not going to be pushing to spawn he's going to be trying to to seize high ground right he's going to go here try to see if he can get a couple of spawn spawn camps right again trying to stagger the enemy team if possible that's not possible with them on the players there so now he's going to try to seize high ground ball is going to drag a lot of attention and there's going to be this recall where it should actually recall it back to the platform i have no clue why it doesn't because it, it platforms should be working with that it must be a bug um, in the game, where that should have gotten into high ground and allowed him high ground, right? Because logically, again, why do we want high ground? One, it gives us a lot of options. It gives a lot of options and it gets a lot of access, right? We can access here and here, right? In general, any place on the map from these high grounds, right, has access, right? You can shoot down and kind of get down to anywhere from these high grounds, right? You can also get out to jail, you can get out to this high ground, and that way you have access to the, the front line and the back line of the entire enemy team, but very little high ground control. They can try to send the monkey up at you, they can try to send the diva up at you. The diva is really the only one that you can be concerned about, and because he has pull bombs, it will be very difficult for them to remove him from that high ground, especially if he can get some heals. But yeah, he's not going to do it, he's not going to be trying to take more high ground, there's a Sombra and everything, so he's going to be play a little bit more main. Which is an option that you can do. Tries to pull spawn the, the monkey. Doesn't really get him. But the brig runs into it. So I suppose that works. Trying to demake the diva. Which is good. Again. Pushing aggressively to spawn. Right. He doesn't let anybody not. And if you notice this entire VOD. There's very little time where Kabach is not fighting. The only time he's not fighting is either if he's getting healed. Or like if he has to go backwards to get a health pack or something like that. Uh, and even then he normally paths in a way. Where he can get here. Where he, get, where, he can, where he doesn't take himself out of the fight. He's almost always engaged in combat. In some way or a form. Always chipping away HP. Forcing out abilities. Drawing attention towards him. Right here he's going to try again to. Continuously uh, mess up the, the, Lucid, the Sinyata. He doesn't land the stick. Uh, unfortunately. Continuously again. Fighting, fighting, fighting. Right now he's pathing. But goes straight back into the Sinyata. Making sure that the Sen cannot actually get out into the fight. Right? Splitting, drawing attention, drawing aggro. It's really, really nice uh, to watch and like a really, really, really great way uh, of just seeing a, a, a very advanced Tracer player play. His fight is, and this is kind of where shit goes down. That should have been a cap, and again, his team fails to capture. Um, you, could have t you could, in theory, have, to have talked about that maybe... Because uh, he chased the Sen and he was out of the fight for so long, uh, they could maybe have just the tanks if he was there. Uh, I think that this is not really Kabachi's fault. He's playing with a like the team composition of the opposing team is just significantly stronger. You can see the differences. They have uh, two tanks plus break. They have Senyara uh, and Moira, and now they have now they have a Genji. I don't think they had a Genji, but I might be wrong uh, earlier. Comparing that to their this team, they have a solo. They have a solo tank with a Sombra, they have a Widowmaker, which could pop off, but doesn't really, right? The amount of map pressure the enemy team has is just significantly compared to Kabachi. And now comes the, the area where they will be full hold the rest of the game, but how Kabachi will be playing it. So Kabachi will be playing on his uh, on the right side of the map. He will be controlling majority of house and be playing majority of this side if possible. And that is, again options 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 and more options this allows him access to backline it in theory allows him to take the elevator shaft up to well the elevator uh, up to the roofs which again we've already talked about high control how it works on this map as these two as one of these houses um both of them of course are hubs and they're connected to each other so one of them will be the hub that connects the other right so you have control over all that but he can play it here which allows him access to cats which from here he can of course attack everything majority of the things over here he has access to doors which can just get him straight out into or be about the middle of their team or the back line he can access far into the back line if there's a lot of pressure on the front line um and he can uh from from here he can get to jail so he can take also control over jail blink over here take control of jail which will again deny the entire area around jail right so by playing 
on the side of of this building on the of the of the far back building he allows himself control of a majority of the of any part of the map if there's a back line here he can attack it if the back line here he can attack it if you want to pressure the front line he can do that if you want to practice anything that's in between here or c9 them he could do that he has access to anywhere where the enemy team is at any point of the game and that is the part that's the powerful position if he plays right side instead right if he had gone through main and played right side while he does get some stuff right he gets a heavy he can get he can play corners here which really makes sure that, that there's some other cannot play here uh, and while he does have access to here uh, and, and of course further back here if for some reason the enemy team would push that far up that's also all he has he, he it's very easy for the enemy team to just well it's easier for the enemy team to kind of block off he could of course flank all the way around through here and they can access but then he would be playing far more into um the third stage of the map where he would then be camping here and kind of trying to push out of one of these very predictable jokes right so by playing here he allows a very he has far more control over like the open side of the map and because he's so good on tracer and because tracer is such a good duel it's very difficult for them to kind of push out this way without uh, allowing his team to push in a capital objective so he allows himself to play here um and have control of majority of the map from it and we'll see that kind of work and why rob is gonna suck him off um and not in a good way i'm very sorry and he's gonna be very close to dying uh, ba -bam, just waiting for heals. I actually think that Anna missed the first shot, which is a feels bad man. He has bomb. He pushes out here, right? You can always see it. Okay, his the enemy team is set up here, which I'm pressure. The, the problem is with no main tank, pushing in on this as a Saria alone is very difficult for the Saria. That's like the big issue. So he can of course attack if there's a lot of pressure, so that they can't easily peel the sun. It becomes much easier for him to do something here, right? But that's not the fun. He goes here for the sun. He takes about half the health. Tries to pull bomb right immediately. Unpack, right? Tries to pressure and again, he gets Discord off. Why right? the pop call lessons? They have a diva on the high ground now, right? It's very difficult for him to go for it. And because his team is getting pushed so far back, he also don't get healed, so he has to play the health pack, right? This is where you can very easily see, including the fact that the the, the, the diva uh, eats the, the, the graviton, you can very easily see how many resources they can put on actually stopping him, right? A break and a Sinyata on him alone, including the fact they can send more people uh, after him if needed. Right, it's it's kind of nasty, and it's very very one of those kind of things that it's like it's just difficult for him to play here. He's gonna play here, try to punish the sorry, which I do believe he's actually gonna do here, right? And that is again just the place that he does right. He gets uh, almost a double. They have to pop trance to stop him because again he has access and he's constant active, constant looking for a pick or something, going in for these duels. But again, notice he gets out if he is low or if he's taking a duel that he does something and go in. He rather goes for the health pack and rather stays alive than anything else. He could have gotten that kill if he didn't with the pull pump, which was really unlucky, right? But again, for example, there that's another kill. He's, he is getting majority of the kills for his team, even though his main group is constantly getting pulled back, and they can put resources on trying to stop him, right? Which, again, I believe is, like, one of the things that just makes him a really good play Tracer player. Mechanically really good, but also game sense-wise, he's just insane, right? He got clearly outplayed by, of course, this break. Uh, way fucking better. Uh, Simu's uh, one of the most uh, mechanically skilled break players in the world, as we all know. Um, blinking out here, right? Right, for example, now, right? Torbjorn, Sombra, Widow, right? No tanks, nothing, and it's kind of OT, so it's about to get lost but you can kind of see again how he plays and just notice how he plays here in the last part right gets one because the moira tries to take a duel that he shouldn't take he touches a little bit he plays now outside here why didn't he play now you might ask okay so why would he go through here or go touch yes but why would he now be stuck over this side that's of course because he has to playing this far back allows him to zone him with that amount of resources he cannot he can easily get zoned out same with playing house it's very easy to deny either one of the exits of house that he has now to rotate close to objective to play much closer he has the bin he has the crate he has the side of jail he has inside of jail right and he has the pale itself as cover um, and then he of course has like a little bit over at this side so he has some of his cover points that he can use to kind of move around and try to utilize damage but right now he kind of just has to try to brawl as much as possible so gets done forces his recall again gonna get a dmac onto this diva kind of looks for looks for a bomb gonna try to see what he can do right again he needs to touch just hiding 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 touches right one second rest recall he gets the recall back again notice squeeze this out make sure that he's looking for kills looking for shooting not trying to force anything doing his very best at like at holding his resources as possible while still making place right very very important the way that he plays right gets the break right he's 
getting kills. The problem is, again, with very little pressure on the point and very little presence from his team, there's not much more he can do. But um, that's also an important point to watch, to watch how the pros try to deal with the struggle. Uh, and I do believe that this is a video, that this is a win. Yeah, it's a victory they're going to actually win this 2-1. to one. And again, that's the, the important part. The way that he plays, he doesn't tell, he's not like, oh, oh, fuck, this is not working. He plays this game, he does these things, and it works. And that's how he plays Tracer. It's a very methodical way, but it's it's different. It's it's not like this, like, okay, it's pure games, I'm just going to play around my team. It's a solo carry, but it's very, very well thought out. The way that he helps his team propel forward while still being able to just impact the game heavily himself. I absolutely love the gameplay. Uh, if you want to see more like this, uh, like, subscribe, and so on. And tell me down below who you want to see. I saw a lot of ML7 requests, so if that's still a thing, then tell me down below. Um, I hope you like this video, and as always, sorry for the delay and so on. If you want to hire me as a private coach, 50 years for a two-hour session, hit me up uh, on Discord down below. Doesn't matter if you're bronze or top 100, I can help you rank up during the summer. So, I love you guys very much. Peace to care, stay positive, my name's been Joel, and you guys keep dating me in your crossing. <laughs>